Hello and welcome to the latest Flying Kayak Flying Vlog. In today's Flying Vlog, I'm going to talk about this. What is this little box thing? Stay tuned and you'll find out not just what this is, but also what it's used for, why it's so amazing, what its history is, and why you might just want to buy one of those for yourself. Check it out now. Alright, the fun little box thing that I showed you in the intro clip is in fact a Polaroid SX70 camera. This is an instant photography camera. With instant cameras coming back over the last few years and becoming increasingly popular as party shoot cameras you can just pull out and take cool memories and photos with, this camera was something I found out just recently about. This is more or less the ultimate Polaroid camera allowing for a lot of manual settings and making for a really amazing tool to create some really amazing art with. But what exactly is this camera, how does it work and why is it that amazing and still famous to this day? In today's video I'm going to talk about the general characteristics of the camera first. Then I'm going to talk about the camera's pricing and availability and the camera's history and finally I'm going to give you a list of pros and cons, show you some images and sum up what exactly I like or dislike about this camera and whether I would recommend it to you as a camera buyer. First things first, let's just quickly unfold this camera and see what it actually looks like. I'm just going to quickly place my microphone over on the table. I hope you guys can still hear me quite okay and Let's unfold this. To unfold the SX-70, you basically just grip it in your palm, open up the viewfinder, then pull on the back until it clicks out, and now all you have to do is click it into place. Et voila! You just have a Polaroid SX-70. Talking about general features of this camera. The camera I'm currently holding in hand is a Polaroid SX70 Land Camera Model Alpha 2. So it is a slightly newer model of SX70 than the original one. It is a foldable SLR camera, meaning it is a reflex camera. It has mirrors inside that reflect the image that gets through the lens all the way up to the viewfinder so that what you see when you look through is exactly what's coming into the lens. That allows for manual adjustment of bokeh effects and focus, creating some pretty cool effects in the final image. The camera itself is more or less completely made out of high quality components like metal and glass. That means that the lens is a glass lens allowing for a clearer image and a bit more high quality in terms of lens. This particular model is equipped with a sonar autofocus, making it an autofocusing camera allowing to focus to distances from 0.6 meters or about 2 feet all the way to infinity, so you can use this to focus on objects closer or further away from you. Also what this camera has is it has a manual exposure adjustment knob right over here on the left side which allows you to over or underexpose the image depending on your needs and gives you a bit of that manual shift with exposure in case you want it for shooting, so it has a lot of manual controls. You can connect flash bars to the top, either modern ones made by Mint or older ones which burn magnesium and you can connect a remote shutter button to the side allowing for great photographs. This camera uses a special type of film, the so-called Polaroid SX70 film. That film differs from Polaroid 600 and Polaroid Spectra film in that it has a lower film speed or ISO. You might wonder what film speed is. Basically it means that the film is a little less light sensitive than other films meaning that this particular film will create a bit more natural looking colors and it will most likely also create a little less grainy, more precise image. But it also needs more light than other film, which means that this film probably won't work as well indoors. I'm going to talk about how good this film actually works in just a few seconds. The film that is manufactured for this is still created by the Polaroid company, previously known as Polaroid Originals, previously known as the Impossible Project, which was preceded by the actual Polaroid company that made these cameras and is still produced until today and can be found at many local retailers. The Polaroid SX70 film has about 8 images in each film and an included battery, meaning that you don't need a battery to power these batteries included 
with the film so you don't have to recharge the camera you don't have you don't have to plug it in it'll just work the moment you have film inside of it talking about pricing and availability this camera is available online on various online stores as well as from the polaroid official website it costs between fifty dollars for a working one in a not so great condition off of ebay all the way to four five hundred dollars off of the polaroid store which means that you have a relatively big price range to get a usable one off of ebay you'll pay between 80 and 120 dollars depending on which one you get and if you can find a good deal for example in an auction for this particular model i paid exactly 80 euros which translates to roughly 82 83 dollars american all right so let's talk about the camera's actual history. The Polaroid SX-70 was created about 1971 and was produced until about 1981 and then succeeded by further models. This was the first ever instant SLR camera, which meant it brought a whole new type of photography to life. Now was the first time in history, way before digital cameras, that you could snap a picture and hold it in your hands just a few minutes later, and that is an incredible step forward. It made Polaroid cameras incredibly popular and it allowed for a lot of art to be created that otherwise just wouldn't have existed. This camera also back then was one of the first SLR cameras that automatically adjusted its, ex its exposure and later one of the first cameras that automatically adjusted its focus. So this is really a piece of photography history. It was used by many famous photographers such as Ansel Adams and it is still used to this day to create art. I personally think that the history of this camera alone might be one of the amazing reasons why any modern photography geek like I am might really want to purchase one of these just so you can experience the old SLR clicky feel of these cameras and get the instant picture and understand what it must have felt like to do this in an age where digital photography was still an unimaginable thing of the far distant future. In general this camera was introduced by Edwin Land, its creator with a keynote event that was fairly similar to Apple's modern keynotes. He kind of pioneered those. And on that event, he took at least five pictures in a quick succession with this camera after he pulled it out of his pocket and unfolded it in just seconds and left the crowd in awe at what you could do with this amazing little device. It was marketed as a pocket camera because it's so small you could literally fit it into your pocket if it was folded down. And you can still do that today. That's why this camera really has an amazing history. Now, looking at this Polaroid camera's pros and cons. The good things about this camera are honestly the amazing manual adjustments you can make. With its focus and bokeh effects, this camera provides some amazing effects you can create on Polaroid images that you cannot do with any other instant camera I know of that's out there, period. If you want to create art with an instant camera, this is probably the way to go, as it's generally regarded as the highest end instant photography device you can buy nowadays. And also, well, there's a few more modern Polaroid cameras that are made as remakes of this one, but those are even more expensive. But in general, this is regarded as the standard high end artistic Polaroid camera. This camera allows for incredible photos with incredible effects, which means that this is an amazing artistic tool. What I also really like about this camera is the fact that it's got a very natural looking lens and with the SLR you can adjust stuff like focus automatically and see it, not just trust that the autofocus system on your camera is working correctly as you have to do with other autofocus Polaroid cameras. Another thing I really like about this camera is the fact that the film price is slightly lower than other cameras for Polaroid as the film itself is i don't know probably a bit easier to make in general with its low iso it has incredible natural color reproduction as you can see in some of the images that i'll be showing you right while i'm talking about this and with that natural color reproduction and beautifully high dynamic range i think that this is an amazing polaroid film which allows for some incredible art to be created but one more thing that i really love about this camera is the black and white film i enjoy the way it creates high detail super cool photos and I enjoy the way that these Polaroid photos just look amazing. Especially in black and white, you can see every little detail. They're incredibly sharp 
and have a fairly high dynamic range. All things that I love in cameras and that I especially love in a camera that was originally meant to be used as a casual shooting camera and is now an incredible artistic tool. The camera's other big selling points are definitely its small form factor and incredible robustness. So while I have to be super careful with lenses and cameras that I take around, this camera I can just throw in my backpack and forget until I arrive at the shooting location. It's super robust and it's incredibly portable. Due to the fact that it folds down super light, you can in theory stuff this into a jeans pocket if you really must to carry it around for those last few meters. And that makes it an incredibly versatile camera because the best camera is always the camera that you're carrying on you. And in many cases, that might just be a Polaroid SX70 to capture that perfect moment because it's just the smallest camera you can find. With its long and flat form factor, it might fit inside pockets of, for example, backpacks and thus be really useful. Of course, modern point and shoots are smaller in general, but they're probably a bit bigger in terms of width which might make them unsuitable for side pockets. And they're probably also a little more fragile, which might make them unsuitable for just throwing into a backpack. But there must be things I don't like about this camera. And there are. The problem with this camera is that it has such an incredibly, incredibly slow film, which means it has an incredibly low ISO, which means that you won't be taking good indoor photographs, especially as it lacks a flash. So you have to buy a flash for a lot of money or you just don't get to take indoor or darker pictures, making this a not so good camera to take out and make memories of parties, for example, or staying out um, with friends overnight. That's not the perfect camera for that. If you're shooting in broad daylight, and if you're shooting subjects outside in parks, for example, it's a wonderful camera. But for inside and for parties and for those fun Polaroid things that you do with an Instax Mini, you probably should stay with the Instax Mini because that one does have higher ISO film, which will create a more bright image. You can test that in your smartphone, by the way, just by pulling the ISO up and down. If your smartphone allows for that, you'll see the image gets brighter and it gets lower, but it also gets a little more grainy and the colors might seem a little off once you tune up that ISO really high. Basically, that's not too different from what different film speeds do. Coupled with the fact that this camera has a tiny aperture of f8, which means it has a very small front opening, this camera will always have to be super steady so as not to induce motion blur from the long shutter speed, meaning that the shutter stays open for a long time during pictures. This means that if something moves in the picture while the camera's shutter is still open, that will create a blur or swish effect and that is something that this camera definitely does a lot of the time and that's super sad because you can take great pictures and then something's moving or you move the camera and they're totally blurred out that's why i would recommend to always take a tripod with you but i will do another video in which i'll definitely talk about what tips you can use to really shoot great pictures with polaroid sx 70s so stay tuned for that one to release fairly soon all right now that we've talked about the camera and that we've talked about all of those things, how about we move on to the summary? Would I recommend this Polaroid SX70 for you? If you're planning on stepping up your Polaroid game, if you really want to create those amazing artistic Polaroid pictures, if you might want to print your Polaroid picture or transfer it to another medium, which is possible and incredibly cool, then probably you want to go with one of these cameras because it just has the most retro look, it has the coolest picture look, the film is probably the best film I've tried to date made by Polaroid Originals or the Polaroid Company. So if you want to have sharp, clear, beautiful images, especially in black and white, this one's the one to go for. If you want to use it for art projects or online displaying of the pictures, again, this is the standard, the gold standard Polaroid camera for more advanced use. If you're just a beginner with Polaroids and you were trying to buy your first camera or you just want to use it for fun shots with friends and making memories during that perfect party or out in summer, then this is probably not the best camera because you'll need a tripod to hold it really steady and create those amazing good shots. You might get more blurred shots or more unusable dark shots out of this if you use it as a party camera. So perhaps stick with an Instax Mini or another Polaroid camera that's better suited to your creative task. 
with a price point of between 80 and 120 dollars on ebay or other websites or of course you could go for the full refurbished one for a very much more expensive price but you'll probably get a 100% working model and a much better safety guarantee that this model will work for a long time and of course you can always send it in for repairs i believe they do have a warranty on those sx70 products so yeah you're if you want to do that you can go with a full price one either way it's going to be worth the money and especially if you find a cheap one on ebay i see no reason not to buy it because it's an amazing camera i've been using it for the last few weeks and i'm loving every bit of it it's just fun to use it's cool it's quick it's an awesome camera and it really allows you to create some art and have some fun moments together with the subject and of course with this camera if you want to do that go ahead and buy it i can only recommend it Thanks for watching, safe travels, blue skies, and many happy landings, and see you the next time on the Flying Kayak Flying Vlog. Until then, have a good time, don't forget to take lots of photos.